So one of the commonest uh, areas for discussion in our weekly uh, MDT meeting is in patients who you believe should proceed to an allogeneic transplant for the treatment of acute myeloid leukemia in first remission. What you do if by flow uh, technologies or by PCR, they are shown to be MRD positive pre-transplant. And the reason that there is debate is because there's now clear retrospective and more recently prospective evidence that the presence of pre-transplant MRD increases the risk of relapse. And in certain population of patients, particularly patients with a FLIT3 mutation, that increase can be very substantial. And so the argument goes that one might consider giving these patients further chemotherapy so that you reduce the MRD burden, proceed to transplant, hoping that the risk of relapse is lower because you've eradicated the MRD. Alternatively, you make a case, well, the most effective curative option is an allogeneic transplant. And if you delay by giving further chemotherapy, you may compromise the safe delivery of a transplant. Or in fact, a patient may not be able to go to transplant because of toxicities. And also, you could point to the fact that there's no randomized data that giving further chemotherapy to reduce the MRD levels uh, necessarily improves outcome. So I think it's uh, important for us to uh, recognize that randomized trials are required to answer this question with good prospective data. And we don't have those studies. There are a couple of lines of evidence that suggest that it might be useful to give further chemotherapy. These are data in, uh, first of all, the Jeffrey Lancet CPX study, the pivotal licensing study, where patients who got CPX as opposed to DA did better, but they did particularly well if they went to transplant. So possibility that actually what you do before transplant in terms of chemotherapy may improve outcome. And there was the same observation in the ratified trial where the mitostorian arm did better, but particularly after transplant. Against that is the fact that retrospective studies show no impact of courses of intensive chemotherapy. So our practice, and I think it's the practice of many centers actually, is to say in the absence of good prospective data, what one needs to do is proceed to transplant as quickly as possible and to consider how you can optimize the transplant uh, delivery so that you reduce the risk of the relapse. And essentially there's two ways that that can be done. The first is there's now clear evidence from the USCTN 0901 study, which randomized patients in exactly the scenario of AML in first remission, that if patients were MRD positive and they got a myeloablative conditioning regimen, their outcome was better than if you had a reduced intensity transplant. So uh, I think, you know, if you're under 55 and you're fit and you can have a myeloablative regimen, particularly if you're MRD positive, that, that's the way to go. The challenge, of course, is the majority of patients are older than that, they're not fit enough to have a myeloablative regimen. So the question there is, if you're using a reduced intensity regimen, which one to use? So we recently delivered through the UK NCRI AML group, the Figaro trial, which is a randomized study of an intensified sequential RIC regimen versus a standard FB2. And interestingly, that showed there was no benefit of intensifying the regimen. So I think at the moment, if you can deliver a myeloablative regimen, you should, but otherwise proceed to as safe a RIC regimen as you can. And then the other area where there is emerging evidence that you can improve outcomes of these folk is if they're FLIT3 positive, then there's evidence that maintenance with serafinib improves outcome. We also know there's a very powerful graft versus leukemia effect in patients that are grafted from ML. So think about tapering immunosuppression very early. Think about possibly the use of prophylactic DLI. Certainly monitor MRD carefully in patients you deem to be high risk of relapse. Uh, I think this is an area where we're going to need really good randomized studies, which integrate genomics, MRD and treatment interventions along 
the lines of what's the optimal RIC regimen, still work to be done there, but also thinking about randomized studies of post-transplant maintenance therapy. And in that context, uh, I'm really delighted that the Amadeus trial, which is uh, again run through the UK NCRI group, the IMPACT group as well, shows that it is possible to recruit rapidly to these studies. This is CC486 maintenance or laser cytidine from between day 40 and day 80 to a year post-transplant. And that study is now randomized 310 patients and we hope it's gonna close next month. So hopefully that will begin to give us some answers about the maintenance question.